for more or less across to London and speak to our correspondent, Benedict Pavio. Hello to you, Benedict. Uh, Boris Johnson calling it tough a loss. It's just how significant were these by-election defeats? These two by-election defeats are a major blow for the Conservatives and in particular for the Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson. So the Liberal Democrats stormed to victory. Uh, that was uh, almost 30 percent swing, which is very significant. And that was because of tactical voting. That was in Tiverton and Honiton in Devon. And it overturned a 24,000 majority. So, yes, that is very, very significant. Uh, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Ed Davey, hailed uh, what he called the biggest by-election victory our country has ever seen. And it is indeed the biggest, historically. And he said that uh, the, he congratulated, of course, the new winning Lib Dem MP, uh, Richard Ford. He said this sent uh, a shockwave through British politics, uh, that the result was clearly a message for the Prime Minister uh, that the public had lost confidence in him and that he should go. So we can't overstate the significance, not just of the victory, but of the margin of the victory. As for the uh, Labour winning the Wakefield by-election in West Yorkshire, uh, having lost the Conservatives, uh, that seat to the Conservatives back in 2019, they have won it back. So that is good too. And reacting to that, the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, claimed that the Conservatives are, quote, imploding. Uh, and Benedict, I mean, it has to be asked, are we looking at a further embattled prime minister? Yes, clearly we are. Uh, and there is um, disquiet. The fact that there's this additional blow at 5.35 a.m., on key by-elections, yes, but nevertheless, the resignation of the Tory co-chairman, Oliver Dowden, quitting with immediate effect, that was um, really unexpected, saying someone must take responsibility. Uh, could that someone not just be Oliver Dowden, but could he be referring to his former boss? Uh, he has to be underlined that he's really been a loyal supporter of Boris Johnson. Uh, but just before going on a media round defending the Conservative Party, clearly he thought that that would be inappropriate. And in a very terse resignation letter, uh, he talks about our supporters, the Tory supporters being distressed and disappointed by recent events, and I share their feelings. We cannot carry on with business as usual. So the implication is that Dowden is taking responsibility for the moment, uh, where Boris Johnson is failing to do so. Um, a growing number of MPs, Conservative MPs, really worry that they are sleepwalking to the next general election and a terrible Tory route. Uh, so this is striking fear into the hearts of many and a growing number of Tory MPs. Remember, it was just three weeks ago that Boris Johnson won a, by a uh, confidence, a vote of confidence, but that was by a narrow m margin. The rebellion was far bigger than had been uh, predicted. This is all in the context of 9.1% inflation here, set to go to 10%, a national rail strike that seems to be uh, going to continue, a threatened strike uh, by doctors, nurses and teachers, a, an announced strike yesterday by British Airways. So a very difficult social context. And you've got Boris Johnson, who is in Kigali right now for a Chogham uh, Commonwealth summit. Uh, he's under pressure to return to the UK. Is it wise of him to stay away for eight days? And could there be a change in the rules and another confidence vote in the coming weeks or months? All right, Benedict, thank you very much. Benedict Pavio reporting from London.